Hi and welcome to another episode of The Trans 101. My name is Chase and today we're talking about bottom surgery. More specifically, we're going to be talking about the second type of bottom surgery, which is phalloplasty. The first type that I discussed was metoidioplasty, which was in the previous video. If you'd like more information on that one, please take a look at that video before this one. It is going to be very hard to keep this video short and I apologize. Phalloplasty is a very complicated surgery that has a lot of steps, so I will try to give you the most simple description. Now please keep in mind, just a little disclaimer, a lot of surgeons do this surgery differently. A lot of surgeons do it in different stages. A lot of surgeons do it in one stage. Um, there are different methods to do it. There are different places that do it. There are different surgeons that do it. All of these things can be different, but I will give you the most basic form of phalloplasty explanation that I can and we're gonna just go from there and I'll explain more and more after. So what I'm going to tell you right now is the most common form of phalloplasty that I have seen people get. All right, so phalloplasty, what is it? You are creating a penis, all right? And by the way, I will be using anatomically correct terms, so if that triggers anyone, I'm very sorry, but I want everyone to understand 100% what I am talking about. So in order to create a phallus in phalloplasty, you need to get donor skin from your body, a donor graft. Now, the most common graft that there is out there is the forearm. The forearm phalloplasty is the most common phalloplasty out there, where they basically, which is what I'm gonna explain, um, they basically would take the skin off of the arm here. They usually go about up to here. Some surgeons go higher, some don't. It's different for everyone, but let's just say that it goes here. So they are taking the skin off of your arm and then they're going to create the phallus with this skin. Now in order for this arm to be covered, they are going to take a split thickness graft from your leg, usually. So this is a very thin, thin skin that they will put on to your arm in order to cover the arm, and this will act as your skin graft. Over time, it does heal. A lot of people, it heals to either a pinkish hue, or it'll match your skin color, um, or it'll just look a little bit bumpy. Some people have gotten tattoos in order to hide it, but that is usually, um, it usually just ends up being a very big scar, but for some people, like really, you can get a tattoo over it and you don't even see a difference. Whereas with others, you can see that there is a visible difference. Now, in order to create the phallus, you're going to need a urethra as well. So, how do you create a urethra. With the skin that they have taken from your arm, they're going to take a little piece of it in order to create the urethra. So with the new urethra, they connect it to your old urethra, so they let, they sew it together, and then the new urethra now connects to the new penis, the new phallus that has now been created from the skin and the, the tissue that you have in your arm, and then so the new urethra comes out of the tip of the penis. Now, some surgeons put the urethra at the tip of the penis, other, other surgeons put it kind of three quarters of the way so that the urethra kind of comes out of the base, like the bottom of the penis instead of the tip. It depends on the surgeon, it depends on the method, like I said, but most people get it through the tip. Now this is the part that gets a little bit complicated. This is where I'm talking about microsurgery and the connection of nerves and sexual function and full sensation in the new penis. All right, so there is a nerve that most surgeons will use that is connected. It's kind of, I can't show you, I wish I could. It's like on your hip, kind of on your hip, but like up in the front. And so they usually do an incision right over here in order to connect the nerve. Now, where are they getting this nerve from? There is a nerve in your arm that they take, all right? so. It is, that's why this is one of the most popular phalloplasties because the skin is very sensitive, very good skin to use for phalloplasty, but also because one of the main nerves in here is perfect for phalloplasty. They will connect this nerve to the nerve that you have here and bring it up to the phallus so that you can have sensation. A lot of people, a lot of myths around phalloplasty is no, you can't feel anything. They're literally doing microsurgery and connecting these nerves together in order for you to be able to have sensation. Now there's another thing that you can do to have another nerve in order to increase sensation. You will still have your clitoris, all right? And that is, you have two, you have two options, okay? You can either leave it out so it will be at the base of your penis, of your new penis that is now created. So you will have the phalloplasty and you'll have your clitoris underneath. Some people do this. That's fine. Other people will bury the clitoris inside the phallus and they will take the nerves that are in the clitoris and they're going to attach them to the other nerve. This can increase sensation for people. Sensation is not guaranteed for everyone, but I have never met anyone in my personal life 
and I talk to a lot of people who have phalloplasty that have ever had zero sensation in their phallus. If it's not sexual sensation, then they can at least have some tactical sensation and the erotic sensation that they'll get is usually from the base of their penis. Now I have some very close friends who have had phalloplasty and when they talk about sensation, they always talk about it's so interesting how bodies are because the most sensation that I feel at my penis is the tip of the penis. Now you would think that you could probably only feel the base, maybe the middle of the penis, but really the most sensation that they have is at the tip of the penis. So you have your choice basically of what you want to do there, but also some surgeons do it one specific way, so please do your research on the surgeon, have consultations, talk to surgeons, talk to people who have had surgery with that surgeon if you know somebody and who's comfortable talking to you about it. Now the next aspect is the scrotum. They're going to build a scrotum just like they do in metoidioplasty. They take the lips that you have, they kind of separate underneath in order to build the scrotum. Some surgeons will fuse the scrotum together, some will have two separate sacs, um, and then they implant testicles. Testicle implants are usually not implanted in the first stage of phalloplasty. I did not talk about stages because it can get very confusing if we do that. So now I'm just telling you like all of the information of what phalloplasty is, and then I'll break it down into some stages that are the most popular. And then of course there's the vaginectomy. Same thing as in the metoidioplasty, it is the closure of the vagina. So basically if you look at someone's genitals, it'll look like they never had a vagina because it will be completely closed, there will be no hole at all. Okay, so these are your genitals, and guess what, you can do whatever you want with them. You just have to find the surgeon that does it. So, you can have phalloplasty where they create the new phallus without a new urethra. So you'll still pee out of where you pee out right now, which means you'll probably be peeing sitting down. You can also get it without the nerve hookup and the microsurgery. You can also get it without the scrotum and you can also get it without the vaginectomy. So a common question is can you get phalloplasty with the urethra lengthening, the nerve hookup, the um, scrotum, but not the vaginectomy because some people would like to still use their hole and still have phalloplasty. This is a possibility, but it does increase the complications. Now there are a lot of complications with phalloplasty and there's a lot of complications with any surgery that exists, okay? That's the point. The most common complications are going to be the complication with the urethra. Now there are two main things that can happen to the urethra. One is a fistula, which is basically a hole in the urethra. So it's basically like if you're drinking from a straw and there's like a little hole and when you're drinking and sipping it, little water comes out of that little hole, that's what a fistula is. That can either um, repair itself on its own or you need to get surgical intervention in order revision in order to close that up. The second thing is a stricture. Now that is a narrowing of the urethra. Usually when that happens you need to go to a surgeon in order to get the urethra dilated and reopened up to make sure that it doesn't close up again. And in order for you to pee, because a lot of people, okay, but when that happens, how do you pee? They add a subpubic catheter so that you're able to actually urinate. So remember how I told you this is very complicated surgeries and there's a lot of different things that you can do? Well, I only talked about the arm phalloplasty. So there are so many different things that you can do. Now, the one, the second most common one that I have seen is the thigh phalloplasty. Now with the thigh phalloplasty, you will have a girthier phallus because there is more tissue in that area. Usually that's what happens. So it's basically the same thing as the arm. They will take the skin off of the thigh and they will create the phallus with it. And in order to cover that area, they will take skin from your other thigh, the very thin skin that I was talking about, and they will cover the thigh with it in order for that not to be exposed and for you to be able to have, it's basically a skin graft so that you can, um, so, that, so they can close up. Now there are other places where some surgeons can take. I have seen the back here. There's also the pubic phalloplasty where they take the groined um, skin on the stomach. There's also, I've seen calf muscle. There's a butt. I've also seen butt. So I can't tell you all of these special things, but I can tell you exactly that is what phalloplasty usually is. So how many stages are there really in phalloplasty? I have seen one stage up to four stages. Some surgeons do four stages because they do the urethra in a completely different stage, which means that you need to have surgery four times. You don't need to have the erectile device put in, but I'm going to talk about that just a little bit because everyone's always asking questions about sex, which I can understand because they're your generals and you want to know if they can be functioning. So can you have sex with phalloplasty? Absolutely. And how I said that not everyone gets an erectile device, but how can you still have sex without an erectile device? Ha! Well, 
So basically, what is an erectile device? Well, it's a device that they put into the phallus in order for you to get erect and in order for you to be able to penetrate someone. There are a lot of different types of erectile devices. Um, the main ones are the pump. So it's two cylinders that are in the phallus and you usually pump it and it, the, the pump is usually in like the scrotum. So it acts as a ball. So you pump it and it goes up and then you click like a little switch and then it goes down again. Now the other one that's popular is the semi-rigid rod. That one is not it's kind of, it's not fused to your pelvic bone, but it is kind of tied to your pelvic bone and it is a semi-rigid rod. So it's a rod that will always be a little bit hard. So you'll always kind of have a semi. Um, in order to put it down, you put it down like that, and then if you want to have sex or you want to be erect, you just kind of click it up, and it'll stay like that. Keep in mind that with phalloplasty, the penis will always be the same size. It is not like a cyst penis where it gets smaller when it is not erect, and when it is erect, it gets bigger. Your penis will always be that size. So if you choose to have a six inch dick, you will always have six inches in your pants. This is not a problem for some people, but other people have said that it's a, it's hard to get used to. A friend that I have who has just gotten the erectile device put in, he got the semi-rigid rod, is having a little hard time right now trying to find underwear that help his bulge because his bulge is so big. It's also hard to wear sweatpants and to wear other types of clothes, so you just kind of have to readjust. Um, but not everyone gets the erectile device. And if you don't get the erectile device and you want to have sex, there are different ways that you can do that. I won't get into that because this is supposed to be a basic 101 phalloplasty video, but I'm getting into like crazy detail right now. I'm going to answer a very basic question, can you come? Well, you can orgasm, you can climax, you can finish, you're great, everything is good. Most people can, okay? Almost every single person that I know has been able to have sexual function in their phalloplasties. Now, can you ejaculate? Do you have semen that will now ejaculate out of your penis? No, that doesn't happen. We don't have those parts. We cannot get those parts implanted into us, so you will not be able to ejaculate and something will literally come out of your penis. Some people have said that they can do it and it's very rare, but it doesn't shoot out. It just kind of like leaks out a little bit, um, but that's very rare and it's not cum, it's not sperm. It's the stuff that they had originally that made them wet. This is what I have understood from that. But that's not something that a lot of people talk about, so that's not, I can't give you a 100%, that's exactly what happens. So how much is phalloplasty? Like every other surgery video I've done, I cannot give you a number, but whew, get ready for this. It's very intense surgeries. I have seen an amount from $40,000 all the way up to $200,000. Um, most surgeons will take insurance in America, from what I understand, and there are a lot more insurances that do cover it. I can't give you an example, I just, hey, I know someone who worked at Apple who got everything covered. Like, yes, but those are like examples from my personal story, from my personal life, and I can't tell you if that's 100% accurate for everyone who would work at Apple. You know what I'm saying? So it is a very costly surgery, and it depends on how many stages you want, and if you want multiple stages, it can go up to 300,000, it can go up to $500,000, it really depends. But like I said, usually most people don't pay for this out of pocket, they usually have insurance. If you live in Canada, it is covered by health insurance. The recovery time is different for everyone. Um, from what I understand from my friends, it sometimes can take six weeks, and I have seen people go hiking two weeks post-op, I'm like, what are you doing? I feel, oh my God. And then I have seen some people take three months to recover, so, um, and be able to do normal life activities and be able to slowly go back to the gym and go upstairs and all of this stuff. Like go upstairs without having like a, a like to think about it. But it's different for everyone. Some people heal longer, some people <laughs> longer health. No. The last thing I want to mention is can you pick the size of your dick? Because I know a lot of people will ask this question. Technically you can. It really depends on the surgeon. Um, there's someone that I know who really wanted to have a very large penis, so they found a surgeon who said yes, they will be able to do that. Because most surgeons will say no, because it can increase the risk of complication. And I say that because the urethra is longer, and usually they take the skin from here, and people don't usually have um, a, like the, a lot of skin. Like if you, I am thin, I have thin wrists, 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 wow, wrists and forearms, so I wouldn't be able to have a very girthy penis if I wanted to get like forearm phalloplasty as an example. Um, but usually, usually it ends up being around five inches, usually. But you can typically ask if you want a six inch, it, it, it really depends on the surgeon, okay? I literally, I can't, some, some want it smaller because they know that it'll be the same size forever, so they're like, I just want three inches. Anyways, that's it. I'm so sorry this video was very long. It's hard to talk about phalloplasty with that, and there's so much more information that I'm not telling you because it would go on forever. If you have any questions, 
I will put all the links in the description below and some blogs that you can look at of people who have had phalloplasty and who talk about it openly and who give you the experiences that they've had. A lot of information that I have gotten have been from these people who have shared their stories, so I would like to thank them because that is fantastic that they're doing that to help other people. So please take a look at those links in the description below and I hope that you were able to understand a little bit about phalloplasty. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye.